Dominique Davis, Jordan McNellis, Coach, go ahead with an opening statement. You know, what a basketball game. I am so proud of our players to be able to get that win. You know, Texas State beat us three times last year. They beat us in the conference tournament, beat us at their place in overtime, and then beat us here. So, again, they're really, really good. Let's just be honest. They're good. They lost some players from last year. They've added some players. But for us to step on that floor with Dom and Malia being our leaders and, and Ja'Coria Bracey and everybody else that hadn't even had an opportunity to play very much. I mean, Emma Walhoff has not played 14 minutes in any game. Ellie Blatchford has not played 21 minutes in any game. And they really helped control the boat. They kept us afloat. They did the things that we asked them to do. And some of it's don't even show on stat sheets, but they were game changers. Dom Davis got off to a little bit of a slow start, but the second, third, and fourth quarter, she took control of the game. And I think when you have a, a bucket getter, as I call her, to be able to go get buckets when you need it and lead our team, I think, honestly, this is the best leadership game she's had for us talking in huddles, trying to tell them where to get, it was really, really evident. So the thing I can say about her, it's been fun to watch her grow. It's been fun to watch her develop in every aspect of her life, not just on the basketball court. But you know what? She stole a lot of hearts with her acrobatic moves and being able to get some shots to go that most people won't. So she, to me, she has really, really grown, and I'm so proud of her. Ja'Coria Bracey had a double-double. I think we've been able to see Bracey just kind of climb. She's getting better and better and better. Her goal every game is to get a double-double. That's what her goal is, and she's had several in a row. Malia gets in foul trouble, and honestly, I'm going to tell you, that was our fear. Uh, we were able to go to her immediately when they were in the man. When they got zoned, they did a great job of really crowding her. We didn't do a good job of getting in gaps of the zones, our wing players, to be able to create her opportunities. But again, at least she was inside able to deter some shots, and I thought she changed it. I just hated it when she fouled out. Dom, I noticed the first thing you did when you came off the court was hug Coach McNellis. I mean, can you kind of just talk about this uh, being, you know, likely your last game at Reed Green and just everything that was going through your head in that moment? You know, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. It's bittersweet. Um, but I'm definitely going to miss it. Like, these past three years have been incredible. Like Coach said, I've grown a lot um, on and off the court. But the fans here, my teammates, my coaches have been amazing. And Coach, I know um, I, get, I got to keep on her toes. Let's just keep it like that. Um, but our relationship is great, and I know everything she does is out of love. And I appreciate her more than she knows. Uh, Dom, I know there's still you know, a little bit of season left, but just um, when you look at being a Southern Miss Lady Eagle, uh, what has this place done for you for anything? Um, it's done a lot. You know, um, I'm going to be able to play after this, um, especially because of my last three years here and what we've done. Um, so being a Lady Eagle means a lot, just the history here. Um, I was able to add on to that. So I know leaving here, I'm really excited. I'm excited I was able to leave my did you lose your voice from this game? Or the last <laughs> game or? I'm not sure. I woke up this morning and I couldn't really talk. So I'm not sure. It might have been because of this game. <laughs> um, did it hit you that you know you're fortunate to play today, given what what happened from the last game? Yeah, you know, I'm very, we're very fortunate to play today. Um, I'm glad that our coaches and our AD was able to make that happen because it meant a lot to me to play my last game here in Reed Green. Um, so I'm very, very appreciative that um, something was worked out um, for me to be able to play in front of my friends one more time. Is there a reason why you weren't suspended with all of the other four players on your team? That well, were we were able to pick games, select games. Okay. And so I asked Dom, do you want to sit out with the others? I knew she didn't, but I wanted to give her the option. And uh, we just, as coaches, are kind of figuring out where we need people and based on who we're playing. Uh, so that's what we're, we've tried to work through. So will she still have to sit out another game? Yeah, everybody has to continue. Okay. Yeah.
do you know if any Arkansas State players? Were you I guys? have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. I just think it was an unfortunate situation. How does for both you guys that the winning streak continues for you all? Um, I'd love to get your, your perspectives on especially missing players again today. Um, how do you feel about this team going forward, especially you know since you guys have kept the winning going? Um, I think we're figuring out how to play our best basketball right now. I know we started the season off really hard, but that necessarily wasn't our best basketball. You know, we were just scoring a lot and getting away with a lot of good wins. Um, and we went through a drought, you know, and we went through some adversity that I think was really needed um, for our team. And so now that we're we're on this win streak, uh, even with not having everybody, I think it shows how dangerous we are from top to bottom because we have a lot of bench players, like Coach said, who hasn't played. So now they're playing a lot of minutes and they're, they're benefiting uh, us as a team. And like Coach mentioned in our, uh, after the game, the person with the highest plus minus didn't even score a point. So that just shows the type of players we have on the team. What was the difference in the fourth quarter being able to kind of separate? Well, I think we did a good job. We've done a better job than we did early on, particularly in that drought of trying to manage that clock. You know, they were trapping on the wings. I actually drew up a play we hadn't even put in, probably hadn't even run it in five years. We call it dribble block. And so with him trapping on the wings, we were able to get two buckets out of it. And from that point, it gave us some momentum. And, you know, I just think our players did a great job of using the clock because our goal was, you know, you want to get it under 10 before we start looking. We don't want to take anything quick because we want to limit their possessions. You know, like it was 250 to go, okay? So you got four, five, you got six possessions, really. Now it's not, it's gonna be more than that, but you got six possessions. So we're probably getting three and they're probably getting three. So we've got to manage and make sure we get a good shot in those three possessions and defend them in the, their three possessions. Two more for Coach and Tom. Go, go. Um, Coach, do you feel like kind of just talking big picture, do you feel like this team can still play for the double buy? Yes, I do. What? Uh, I do think other people obviously had, have to help us. Uh, but we do have two really tough games ahead of us. ULM, you know, we lost to them a year. Did not, go with, did not do a good job in the fourth quarter. I did not do a good job in the fourth quarter uh, of managing the clock. Uh, go in there, they'll be at home, they're very good. Uh, so that's going to be a real challenge for us, a real challenge. That's going to show who we are because they're so, so athletic and scoring the ball and have players with power five experience. But we've got to go in there, we've got to get that win. Arkansas State, it's going to be heated. It will be heated. That concerns me. It concerns me. Um, but we've got to be level-headed we got to think we're here to play and win, not to get back at anybody. And we will have to help control the emotions. I think that will be the big thing for the Arkansas State game, is the emotions of it. Uh, but we've got to get those two wins. And then we have two more as Texas State and Lafayette. And so can we win them? Yes, we can. But we have to continue to improve our game. We can't have that many turnovers. Goodness gracious. We have 21 turnovers. I, I know there's a, you know, it's one game at a time, but when you have four consecutive road games, especially to close out the year, like what's the biggest challenge for you guys you think it's gonna be, right? Well, I think I think number one is actually the travel. Now, ULM Arkansas State's not bad. I mean, that's not a bad travel. Um, and then we drive home from Arkansas State. You know, the Texas State and ULM will be a tough because it's a little bit longer, but we do have an extra day. Uh, but I will tell you on the road, we just don't have a lot of stuff going on on the road. Like we took them to Niagara Falls. We've done a few things with them on the road. And having that extra day, we'll be able to do that. But I think the thing, having them on the road, is you can have a little bit more control, you know, of going to bed. They give us our phones before they go to bed. You know, they're in bed. We don't have problems with people sneaking out. Um, you know, and then we have them locked in in our individual and player meetings. Uh, it really helps them with their focus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.